And number two. Five points. We got Dragon Shrine. Uh, I was going to say Wise Man's Chest. Chicken Race. Pseudo Space. That's cute. Uh, Nephthah Tefnut. Alright. This is really good. Um, can only get better, obviously. Still probably going second here. Uh, just Let's just keep going second hands first. I'll do first hands after. Do second sword. Not dead yet. Because you're ways to hit it. I like to shrine first. That way I'm not drawing into the normal monsters. Although here it may not matter because you have seven sword. The seven sword off also does field, so I still would shrine first. And the first thing I like to send off is it is the Gemini. It gets it out of the deck, treats it as a normal monster in the move. Which that's so important here. The second thing I like to send, unless I have um Asa in my hand, which I don't right now. If I have this in my hand, sometimes I'll send a heretic if it's the only way to summon it, but it won't be right now, so I'm going to send a red eyes, because I don't want uh, dead cards, even though it technically won't be dead. Now if you draw red eyes, you don't care to banish it, because all you wanted was one red eyes in the very deep combos with. Alright, so friends from. Alright, I'm still used to this, this is brand new to me, I used to play Reckless Greed. Uh, Chicken Mice, pay a thousand, draw it. Beautiful thing here is we open that and super space, and I use super space. Copy this effect by banishing it. Draw a card. All right. Not even mad. Oh, you can also start going through your heretic loop to bait normals out of the deck. But like I said, we didn't really care because we had sacred sword. Now you have sacred sword, so you can start your combo off, get the normals out of the deck. And actually, I would probably do that. I like to bait stuff anyway. So special this, so they have no response. Tribute it, and you want to blow up the back row. It's the biggest thing. So you summon suit. They, 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 it's all fine. Dandy Tefnut activates. You bring out, like I said, I like bringing a lab first just for backup tech plays. Also, keeping this in the hand and not using it right away allows you to do cool things like make Zulkin and have its effect result by setting it, which is also really nifty. Um, I just said nifty. Sue's effect pops it back around. So you get other red eyes. And like I said, this is the field you want. The field spells a bonus. The monsters is the field you want. We get the lab, the Sue, and the Tefnut. Or, or, the, or, I'm sorry, the lab, the Sue, and the Red Eyes. The lab, the Six, and the Red Eyes. Which is the, any Six is fine. So let's go along with this. Two things happen from here. A number of things actually happen from here. This is the midpoint you definitely want. If your opponent has cards you still need to bait or still need to get rid of, you could, in theory, synchro these. Make an ultimate is open. Set trigger special to my girl. Banish that problematic card they still have, assuming it all went through. And then continue doing your combo as such. At that point, you can then use the sacred sword to banish this because you don't care anymore. And we hit Azar and a uh, chicken race, surprisingly. Uh, at this point, you have no real way to get rid of the chicken race, so I just hold this. It's kind of shitty that you have to hold it, but you're still fine. You're still absolutely fine. You have a red eyes in the grave, so you can do what you want to do, basically. And what you would do from here. The reason I say you don't know, chicken race is because you could activate a draw card, but then as soon as you're like points, it's less life than you want to damage. So it's just something you have to hold on to. It's the same as drawing the deck that's great as before, so I look at it as the same thing with lighter benefits. Or uh, lighter lighter problems. But um I'll make sure that this uh, camera hit it needs to be. From here you will blame my girl. And red eyes. Or if you want to keep the Michael just in case, if you're worried, um, you summon the Azar. And normally I'll banish Tefnut because it's the least heretic to do anything relevant. And you're you have to banish it normal. You can banish the Gemini, but I wouldn't. You can banish the second red eyes. It's really up to you at that point. But you can also banish Lab because Lab at this point doesn't do anything for you. Unless you're convinced you're going into another turn later and like, you can't kill them. Then banish your red eyes. But I'm just gonna banish Lab himself. So I'm an Azar. This camera's got limited space here, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm done. Alright, and from there you overlay Azar and Red Eyes into Flare Metal. Because you have Red Eyes in the grave, you can use Expect Detach. Always detach the Red Eyes. That way you always have them in the grave just in case for some reason they get rid of these later. Bring back. Either the Gemini or the Red Eye, or the regular Red Eyes. I like to end on the Gemini, so sometimes I'll wait on this and I'll bring out this one. It won't matter though, because this next overlay, since that's a 7 as well, will be another Flare Metal. I'll get the one that has a picture. 
Um, and you'll just detach the red eyes that was the Gemini. But in this case, if you want to be nice about it, just do that. And then switch this in the back. This, the Gemini. Now, you have a normal summon this turn. And that's what I like about it. You then the Gemini summon the Black Flare. And if I have and I did normal summon, I forgot, guys, remind me. But if you don't, it's still game. Assuming they have uh, no monsters left in your turn. 28 28 is 56 plus 24 is exactly 8,000. Um, if it's not completely game where you upstart it or something, you do burn through these every time they activate a quarter effect. And since you have two in the field taking five for each, they're taking a thousand per card. So you should still win through this. Um, if you Gemini it, that's just extra icing on the cake. If they had a monster, have this swing in to like, get rid of it. These two swings from 56, and at the end of the battle phase, it's a burn then for uh, its original attack. It has a Gemini effect of during the. If it perform, if it enter, if it. I forget the way they word it. If damage calculation is performed involving this card, at the end of the battle phase, you inflict its original attack to their life points. So, this is swing over something. This is a 56. At the end of battle phase, this burns for game. Again, if you up started, they have a thousand left. As soon as they activate a Carter effect, it doesn't matter what the heck it is, they're dying. So. Simple as that. Now, if we go backwards, I'm not sure I can go backwards exactly here. Backwards enough to the point where you don't make the result. In. Now we can't. It, it would it would change it up. It would change it up. But I'm just gonna make the field how it should be, right? So this is what you have, and you sacred sorted. So actually, not. This is what we ended up. Um. You have this, but you don't make this open. Oh, I'm so actually sorry. This, these two are on top of the deck, and it was this. Or the thing I banished, so actually. It was this, and it's over here. Alright, if you don't do this open play, what you do instead. Actually, you should have just left the field how it was. Because you overlay this, but I'll actually have me do it. For an autumn. He always detached the normal. This, this ends up being like banished fire for Azar and stuff. Oh, and at this point, since you didn't need to set this, you would have used this and you would have drawn into those two, for example. Um, but you essentially you have to use his effect, and you essentially end on the same field still. Except for the Michael gets replaced by whatever Autumn brings out. And Autumn could bring out Red Eyes, and you could bring back a 7 that way. Silver Gemini, for example. Half the time, I just don't even care enough to bring out Darkness Metal because he ends up being a dead space on the field. But I don't think it alters this combo. I'm just going to put this over it so you guys can still see. Um, and then you just do what I said a second ago. Like banish normally that or the red eyes. Uh, and attack mode. This is the least likely to do anything from the future here. Praise are. Oh, what are these? Make a. Uh, flare. Detach the red eyes. You know, overlay it. Flare. Detach the Gemini, some of the Gemini, it's all works because you have a red eyes in the graveyard, actually, too. Uh, and you end on the same thing, plus a darkness metal, but it's doing nothing for you. The only reason I say this is better is because this, well, you overlay Autumn from Gaia. Now you're looking at 28, 28, 26, 24. And because I still have a normal summon, you Gemini this, but even if you did normal summon through this, you know, you end on this. And it's still hugely over game. Like, this is on the field, I have to indicate it somewhere. Right. And this dead chicken nurse is in your hand. <laughs> but uh, it's not dead, but they're not taking damage if you activate it. Um, and you end on this, and the cute thing here is so 20 and 20, like I said, this is game right here. Super game if you Gemini like this. Ultimate mega game if you have a 26 speed six, that's 20 over defense, is doing extra damage. The only difference is, instead of, if you do the Zulkin play, this is the Zulkin, instead of a Gaia Dragon. So, you have this damage versus this damage. And you'd like to end on this more. Like I said, this doesn't get rid of a problematic card, and Michael does. So it ultimately comes down to, do you need to get rid of something on the field? Yes, then you go with Zulkin and Michael, so you have a card to set. If they don't, and you want more damage, or you don't have a set card in hand, you end on this. And that's the standard plays of this deck. Standard plays. The, the first video I have is the, like, super YOLO, it's not so standard play. Um, 
but this is the standard plan. Uh, if I keep posting videos, the extra videos you guys will see are the uh, other plays, or just random test hands. This is also going second. You want to go second to get the combo up. This was the first turn going second, which is nice. Ideally, you don't want to skip a turn. You don't want to draw, do something and pass, but it does happen, which is why going first in this deck isn't terrible because pseudo space, oh, I'm sorry, chicken game, on the field, they have to out it. And yeah, they can out it by just paying a thousand blowing it up. Which also makes the OTK the next turn for you even easier, because it's 7,000 instead of 8. Or if you upstart, they're still at 8 and you don't really care. But, at the same time, if they don't, and they use its effect to draw, it's still on the field next turn, you draw it, and then you draw again. And if you get it off the field there, then you can keep and then you're golden at that point. Right? Now, I haven't hit a wing beat yet, so obviously I'm going to do a few more videos on test hands. It's even nicer when you open like something like that, right? And then you hit the chicken race and say that the uh, instead of the other uh, instead of a pseudo space, it's another chicken game, right? I'm stuck there. But say the last chicken race I drew was actually a wing beat. It's really nice because then you make the autumn play most of the time. Bring out the darkness metal. I think wing beat using darkness metal. It doesn't target it, and it's not a cost. So it's that resolution. It resolves. You bounce darkness metal in your hand. Blow up the spawn traps in the field, even if it's just yours. So you need to get chicken game off the field so you can hit them for game. And now you have uh, 28 red eyes in your hand that you can banish like Autumn or Zulkin or whatever, summon it. And just, you know, keep it going hard, keep your plays going with section 20, uh, 28 beat stick on top of that. So I'm going to stop this video and I will post more hands in a second.